Good evening and welcome uh, to our last midweek Advent uh, of this year. And we're going to be talking about singing in hope tonight. And then we're going to go sing. And so hopefully all of you can join us. Um, maybe we'll pick some people up along the way as well. I, I don't know whether it's the cold or the fact that we'd be singing in public or just what, but a uh, smaller crowd tonight. Or maybe it's just that there's no food. Um, that could be it as well. Welcome to the Maybe we'll send you home with some cookies. We'll see. <laughs> but we're glad you're here. And um, again, thank you all for being here throughout uh, Advent. We've done some wonderful things. Uh, I was just putting in a thank you into the uh, voice for this week. We, we made 14 or 15 tie blankets to donate. We made 100 of those hygiene bags on the second week. Last week, we made over 200. We made 200 of the uh, rack bags, the random act of kindness bags, and many of those went out this past Sunday. I've heard some amazing stories already from people who shared those. So uh, we're going to be sharing those in in service uh, in January. So uh, you know, please, if you do get a chance to hand some out. We greatly appreciate it, and, and we're going to talk about the blessing that they've been, but also uh, we've been blessed with in the process of doing that. Tonight, we begin uh, with our invitation. The mouse is in the wrong place. Yeah. Technology catalog. We're a little short-handed tonight. Kim is, by the way, um, she graduated to a cane today from her walker already, so uh, she's really pleased about that. So thank you for all the prayers uh, in that. If you would, please rise as we begin with our invitation. The spirit of the church cried out, Come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. All those who await its appearance pray. Come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation pleads. Come, Lord Jesus. We make our beginning tonight in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with our opening prayer, uh, which there are the responses. God of light and love, we come before you seeking your hope and power. Our hearts desire your presence. We're here waiting for the dawn from on high to break upon us. Help us to listen for your voice as we wait in hope. We light off our candles this evening, trusting that the small, smallest yet glowing flames can drive out the deepest darkness, along with all of our greatest fears. We anticipate your coming among us with peace and thankfulness. As we wait your coming, light a flame within us. May you will help me shine with the brightness of your hope. God of light and love, open our voices to declare your goodness. You come from on high into the depths of our lives, into both the joy and the despair. You declare your grace and favor for each of us. We pray for your presence, love, and protection for ourselves and our neighbors in the challenges that they all face. Give them help, wholeness, and understanding. Guide us in the path of peace and help us to use our voices to speak up for the oppressed and to share joy, peace, and love in your world. As you light a flame within us, may we love you and shine with the brightness of your world. God of light, Keep our spirits rejoicing and proclaiming the holiness of your name. Guide us in these days of Advent until our Savior is born among us. Turn all of our attention to you, the one who is our song, our hope, and our joy. For we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, the light that has no end. Amen. Amen. This time we'll sing our song. Light one candle. We get to sing the whole thing tonight, it's the fourth week.
reading for today, but our reflection is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Praise be to the God, to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, as he said to his holy prophets long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. For you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God, our Father, our Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever lost your voice? Whether literally or figuratively, figuratively uh, maybe you've gotten sick and were unable to use words to let somebody know what you wanted or needed, or maybe you've been so shocked you were left speechless with nothing to say, unable to think about how to move forward. Or maybe you've been so scared by what others think or how they might respond that you've been afraid to speak the truth or share your opinion about what you feel is right or just because of possible backlash. That's the society we live in, isn't it? That Uriah knew what it was like to not be able to speak. After, age, after the angel of the Lord came to tell him that he and Elizabeth would have a child, Zachariah lost his voice when he didn't believe the angel's prophecy. How could it be? He wondered. In our gospel this evening, Zachariah gets his voice back. And his first words are, Praise God. Hope has returned. But imagine the questions that Zachariah might have had. Maybe they're the same as some of the questions you're wrestling with today. Can God really bring hope into today's world? I don't know. It seems pretty hopeless. Zachariah Saints, praise be to the Lord, because he rescued us from the hands of our enemies, so we can serve him without fear. But to serve God without fear is probably a pretty big ask, isn't it? Think about it for a minute. Think about all these months of sickness and illness. Think about the riots and the social unrest all the natural disasters and humanitarian crises that have happened in the world. Or even just the broken relationships within families due to the inability of families, friends, or neighbors to have respectful conversations with each other. It sure feels like the world is completely out of control against us. So trying to face the world without fear, that's a lot to ask. Despite recent declines in poverty in Nepal, it's still one of the poorest nations in the world. And on top of all that, Nepal has, as you may remember over the past few years, been hit by a number of very large disasters, including floods and, and a major earthquake a couple of years ago. And so it's understandable that people there may have lost hope. But over the last decade, 
uh, many groups, including Lutheran Road Relief, have been hard at work bringing care and support and training to help out all the people of Nepal, including the indigenous people and the people that live in rural areas that have been neglected, forgotten, and marginalized for years. With COVID-19, um, they've been busy bringing prevention and treatment there, including building health care facilities, especially in those remote areas. Um, and, and that has taken the priority over these last couple years, like COVID prevention has everywhere. See, through generous people, uh, the people of Nepal have become more resilient over the last decade or two. They're more prepared for disasters and other emergencies so that now they not only have a chance to survive, but to thrive. Pardon me while I butcher this poor woman's name, but uh, Shaki Kumarai Adairi. We're going to hear from her in a minute. She knows fear. She knows fear, but she also knows hope, thanks to the love of neighbors like us from around the world. Let's watch the video. Namaskar. My son is Kumari Chaudhari, Gunna Pahar, and I'm going to go to the village of Chalis Barsak. अनि भी विजन रोपने लायक अनि सार ले अनि तालिम पनि दिन भागो अनि तालिम हमले पायरानी ते अनुसार हमले प्यास खेती करे को तेस मामी सफल गए नहीं हैं। कोविड नाइनटीन का कबाब ना हमले लाए अनि साबुन पान डेली अनि साबुन पान ले आठ दुने अनि मार्क्स को प्रयोग करने अनि अनि मार्क्स को प्रयोग करने दूरी कायम रखने अनि सही सब इलाय अनि कोविड लेगर दा सब इस संक्रमित भाई का थे तेज बात हमले हमले मारु सरारु फोन मारफत भाई बने हमले सल्ला दिन उन्हें अनि इस तेज तो गर्म पार्षद बने रा अनि ते अनुसार हमले गए को ते छुट छुटे आइसोलेशन में बहुत सारे तेज को प्रयोग करी हमले जे जे गर्म थे ते नियम भरु पनि हमले पालन करे रा छुट छुटे सफाई सामानों को यूज करे रा ते से बा ते से बहुत सारे हमले ते संक्रमित बाटा हमले बहुत सी को हमरो घर बाये का नी छोड़ चीने के मास पूरे घर घर में थे सुरक्षित भाईर इस तो onions and they now have, uh, are able to provide for themselves um, financially and they have food. Uh, but this past year, the need has grown tremendously with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. As, as you might saw in the video, they're a little optimistic there that uh, thank you for supporting others during, before, during, and after the pandemic. Uh, but hopefully we will continue after the pandemic is hopefully we one day uh, do hope to be completely 
It won't be COVID free, but we'll be out of the pandemic part of it. Um, but they struggled, and their voices were heard by Lutheran World Relief and others, and together they walked forward in hope, uh, even as they felt afraid. And during Advent for us, if you noticed outside, the nights have gotten darker sooner, haven't they? They've grown in length. Night has gotten longer. The temperatures drop. And for many, this is a season of uncertainty and, and waning hope. As you think about all that, what fears are gripping your heart? How can we walk forward together with God in hope? I'm sure that Zachariah's life had a lot of tension and fear. He lost his voice for a number of months and was trapped inside his head. And in the middle of his isolation, he continued to hold on to God's promises. And when he regained his voice, his first words were to praise God. Praise to the Lord, the God of Israel. For Zechariah, his prophecy declared the power and hope he found in God. Zechariah trusted that God's light would shine on the people, even in the darkness. And he wants all of us to remember that even in our silence, in our isolation, in our darkness, God is with us. Emmanuel. Through our love and compassion, God's love, power, and hope has been filling our neighborhoods. It's been filling the lives of those in Nepal, in Honduras, and all the other places that we've looked at over these past few weeks, but especially right here in our own backyard, so that they too, and we along with them, and sing a song of hope and praise to our God. The God who loves us. The God who cares for us so much that he would set everything aside and come down to be with us. To be Emmanuel. May God's love continue to be with you tonight and through all the days ahead as he continues to love you take care of you, and calls you into his own embrace. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Jerry. It's time for some warm-up for Christmas here. We'll do just a couple of minutes, and then we'll have a little break before heading over. We'll probably start over here around 6, so you'll have some time to use the restroom, get bundled up if you want to, and then for those of you who can, you will kind of you have to shoot on the one just a little bit and then take the first right. And then I believe it's like the first row to the right there. But, and then we'll find a place there for a village to set up. So let's sing. Uh, who would like to pick the first one up? Or any Christmas card? Number seven. Number seven, the first one up. By the way, if you don't get a chance right here, right now, you'll have a chance over there to pick some also. Um, or even if you do get a chance to pick them here, you can pick them here. First in a while, let's do. Um, how about one, two, and six? Okay.
here. And uh, thank you for all of you joining us in person. Thank you for those who are watching. Um, quick announcement that those who don't watch or who aren't here aren't in yet is our 7 o'clock service will be broadcast live on Facebook on Christmas Eve. Uh, so be sure that that's going to be coming out in the news notes on Friday. But with the uh, rise of COVID and everything, we're hoping that we can continue to share our message farther and wider. So, uh, but we will be here. But we will live. be here live, yes. So we want you here at 4, 7, 4, 10. But uh, for those who can't make it, or for those relatives far away, they can join in, uh, especially at the 7 o'clock on live. The others will then be pushed out onto YouTube afterwards. So go in peace, the love, and serve the Lord. Thanks. Okay, thank you.